So welcome back to your Bio 212 at Norwalk Rock Community College. And what we're doing is we're now continuing on. We just finished up the introduction to pancreatic juice. And I want to now tie us into the responsibility of the liver. And to do that, I'm going to try a little bit of drawing here right over the car, the actual slide itself. Okay. And remember, materials traveling into the elementary system travel into the stomach, small intestine, large intestine out right so we're actually talking about now the pancreas which is over here and whatever is being made inside the pancreas has to be de deposited into the duodenum right the next part of our cartoon now i mean the next part of our le lecture is going to be how materials that have been made inside the liver let's change colors here so you get the graphic representation green stored inside the gallbladder are then mixed with materials that are made inside the pancreas so that we can now affect efficient chemical digestion inside that small intestine to get the macromolecules that we need for both catabolism and hydrolysis inside or anabolism inside of the so catabolism slash hydrolysis anabolism slash dehydration synthesis reactions that have to happen inside our cells. Okay. So what's doing this work? This is being done. Let's get rid of that first. Boy. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Okay. Come over here. Let's go here. And it's the liver. Okay. Heaviest gland of the body. Major, major cell types are the hepatocytes. So anytime you see the word hepatocyte, you're thinking liver they metabolic secretory endocrine functions they create bile okay which will have digestive responsibilities and to do this they have to create these structures that are called bile canaliculi and what they're doing is they're collecting the bile as it's being made what we're going to do is we are going to collect this material and i'm going to sort of take us right to this figure here where you're going to see that it's all going to be collected as product that can be stored inside that gallbladder okay i'm not interested in what different types of materials are traveling meaning how do we rearrange these hepatocytes what is important to understand is that you actually have a bile duct which is a branch of the hepatic artery and a branch of the hepatic portal vein which means all of these cells here are being perfused with materials that have come from the small intestine already mixed with oxygenated blood and you're collecting the product okay one more time materials coming from the small intestine traveling through the hepatic portal vein are mixing with the hepatic artery meaning oxygenated blood and whatever the products are that are being made in these hepatocytes are now being collected into that bile duct okay What's the gallbladder doing okay it is concentrating whatever is being made inside that liver so it's being sent to the liver okay it's going to be concentrated i wrote here tenfold it doesn't really matter exactly how much it's concentrated just that it is concentrated so it can actually function and primarily what you want to make sure that you understand here is that these are bile salts salts and bicarb okay which means when it's going to mix with the materials that are coming from the pancreas, you now have the ability to increase the surface area of fats because that's what bile salts do. They increase the surface area of fats. We call it emulsification. And then the bicarb, which is going to offset the pH of the chyme as it comes in. Okay. So here's a, a figure from your textbook, which is what I've already hopefully pointed out to you rich nutrient rich deoxygenated blood from the hepatic portal system travels into those sinusoids where oxygen rich from the hepatic artery comes in as well ultimately everything that's broken down or cleared out will now return to the right atria of the heart so what are those hepatocytes doing well they're making about a liter of bile daily and it's mainly bile salts. There's some cholesterol inside of there. We know we need the cholesterol for making specific hormones, right? We use cholesterol as the building block for all of our steroid hormones. Okay, lecithin, bile pigments, 
we think of bilirubin down here, right? Principal bile pigments derived from heme of recycled red blood cells. And you break down the breakdown product, stercobilin gives feces its color, right? Having told you all of that, what's actually going to happen is the action occurs inside the small intestine. You deliver these materials into the jejunum at that hepatopancreatic ampulla, or sphincter of Odi, and it's going to travel from the duodenum to the jejunum to the ileum. Ileocecal junction is where we go from the ileum to the large intestine. It too has absorptive cells, okay, meaning these are mucosa. So we have the jejunum, the ileum, and the duodenum. And the duodenum, of course, is where we're accepting materials in from the stomach. Uh, let's see, let me see. What the hell? Uh, get rid of these typos. Let's get rid of that. Okay. Um, what I want you to also understand is that panet cells are releasing lysozyme, and these you also have enteroendocrine cells, and you'll see what's important about that a little bit later on. But imagine, if you will, we have to segment the movement of materials from one part of the small intestine, making sure the large intestine knows material is coming along. And remember, MALT stands for mucosal associated lymphatic tissue, so everything that the panet cells can help break down, the mucosal associated lymphatic tissue will now try to identify as friend or foe. Okay. An interesting development here is duodenal glands actually can also secrete an alkaline mucus, which means not only do you have the pancreas, the liver, but you also have the mucus sec secreting cells of the duodenum actually offsetting the pH. Quick look here. Here's our small intestine right there. And inside we have these circular folds and these circular folds have a specific name. They're called the plica circularis. And significantly for you is that look at all the surface area. That's what you want to pay attention to because you're going to see how it works in a second. Those circular folds, okay, are mucosa and submucosa. And what happens is it causes the chyme to actually spiral. So it's a churning churning mixture so it's you're increasing the movement of material so that they d flow over the finger-like projections of mucosa and then on the tops of those villi are these things that are called microvilli and that's where enzymatic digestion occurs so that absorption can occur notice what i said there enzymatic digestion occurs so absorption can occur so let's what does this look like here is that one individual cell on a villi and on its surface are these microvilli. So digestion is going to occur here. We're going to absorb into the lamina propria, into the circulatory system, unless you're a fat of a specific size, and then you go into the lymphatic system. Down here, remember I said we'd come back to those enteroendocrine cells, nudge, nudge, hint, hint, wink, wink. What you want to make sure you pay attention to here is that the major hormones are secretin, cholecystokinin, and or GIP, okay? And secretin, cholecystokinin are going to regulate the movement of materials. GIP is where things get a little bit weird, and we'll come back to that during the review. But for right now, notice the small intestine is now also an endocrine gland. It is releasing hormones that are going to regulate the function of digestion show you that. I don't need to show you that. Let's go here. So the intestinal juice and those brush border enzymes. So it's making its own material, which is slightly alkaline, which is going to aid in absorbing materials, right? So that change in pH is what allows for absorption to occur. And what's going to happen is, along with the materials that have come from the actual pancreas, you also have alpha dextrinase, maltase, sucrase, lactase, aminopeptidases, dipeptidases, nucleosides, okay, nucleosidases, as well as phosphatases. Big fancy names for telling you carbohydrates get broken down. Dextra, malta, sucra, lacta, lactase here. Aminopeptidases, dipeptidases, these are amino acids. Nucleosidases, that's the RNA and the DNA. And phosphatases are going to break down phosphates. Interestingly, when I first drew the cartoon for you, I said there was no mechanical digestion occurring inside 
the actual small intestine. And what I want to do is I want to sort of not change that, but understand that as materials are passing through, it has to get segmented. And that's the purpose of the myenteric plexus, right? You actually have to segment materials that are traveling through. So you're mixing chyme along with the mucosa for absorption, and we're going to move it towards the large intestine. Okay, so this is what we mean by churning things around. Remember, I said it's going to spin it and spin it again. Well, as it's spinning it, it's creating the ability to absorb materials through that by changing the location of the surface area of the bolus, which is just a really odd way to put that, but sorry. Chemical digestion, carbohydrates. These are the big fancy names I just mentioned to you. Um, pancreatic amylase, as well as these, are breaking down so that we end up with a monosaccharide as best we can. That's what we'd like to have. 100% efficiency of digestion of materials would be a small meal, chewed 30 plus times, taking your time to digest it, digest it so that when it gets absorbed into the hepatic portal system, it is a monosaccharide. Same thing with proteins, trypsin, chymotrypsin, carboxypeptidase, okay, are coming from the pancreas itself whereas the aminopeptidase and dipeptidase are at the brush border. It's not really important to remember the distinction here, just that we have to break down, imagine it's a piece of steak, all of the proteins inside that piece of steak into amino acids or dipeptides. Lipids, pancreatic lipase is the most important for triglyceride digestion, so we're going to emulsify things as a result of that pancreatic li lipase because the bile salts have increased the surface area. Nucleic acids, I've already told you multiple times, ribonuclease and deoxyribonuclease are from the pancreatic juice, but you can also have nucleosidases, which are these, okay, as well as phosphatases inside the brush border. And here's where things get cool, right? You got to you gotta ingest all of this stuff or absorb all of it, okay? Otherwise, what was the point of all of the work? And it's by facilitated diffusion and or active transport into the blood. Okay. And you're going to see, when I just flip down here, you're going to see this is the same figure I had inside your textbook. And notice how it's color-coded for you. All these purples, okay, glucose, galactose, which are monosaccharides, right? They have secondary active transport to get into the cell with sodium. Fructose is facilitated diffusion. It just travels right through. We're down here in green, amino acids, dipeptides, tripeptides. The amino acids secondary active transport with sodium, whereas dipeptides and tripeptides are secondary active transport with hydrogen protons. Okay, so you could see where I could ask some funky ass true and false questions with that. Uh, on the whole, I'm not going to try and trick you. I want to make sure you understand that Mother Nature wants monomers inside of the actual hepatic portal system down here. Short chain fatty acids can use simple diffusion. Your mother nature will create globules that are called micelles that will then be converted into chylomicrons inside of the cells, and that's going to transfer via the lymphatic system. So it's the chylomicron that's traveling through the lymphatic system. Simple diffusion of fatty acids travels through your circulatory system. What else are we collecting? Well, we got to get those electrolytes out, right? Sodium ions are being claimed by active transport which means we are expending energy to get them back into the body. Vitamins, fat-soluble vitamins A, D, E, and K, okay, by simple diffusion, okay, but they can also be transported with lipids inside those micelles. Most water-soluble water vitamins are absorbed by simple diffusion. You get roughly mm, most of the water back that you've ingested, okay? Only about 100 mils of it is excreted through feces, and it's a passive, passive mechanism to get water back into the body by osmosis. So where's it gonna go then? Well, it's gonna, what's le whatever's left, okay? It's gonna be, this is, you can actually see the volumes of water traveling in and getting, being taken back, back out. But by the time we actually now move on to the large intestine, which is what we wanna think about next, you can see that we actually have four major re regions. We know we're starting at the cecum because the ileocecal valve, cecum to colon to rectum to anal canal, where the ileocecal sphincter, okay, is going to 
actually allow for the divide to occur. And then we have an ascending, transverse, and descending, as well as sigmoid colon. And you remember I drew this sort of for you. Let's go like this. So here's the entire digestive system again, alimentary canal to the stomach, meaning the esophagus to the stomach, small intestine. Yeah, ascending, transverse, descending, sigmoid colon, right? And the opening has an internal anal sphincter muscle, okay, which is smooth muscle, which means that's the stuff you can't control. And then this is the external anal sphincter muscle right here. Presumably you can control, okay? Get rid of that you down over there and let's go here so you saw my drawing you, this is obviously ascending transverse descending there's a sigmoid colon here and then you actually will move from the rectum down to the anus itself it too has four layers the mucosa mostly absorptive and goblet cells there aren't any circular folds all we're trying to do now is just pack materials together prepare it for movement into the rectum and then out of the body to do this what mother nature does is she uses these hostra and she uses the longitudinal muscles to actually push materials along there is mechanical digestion that's occurring here and the reason for that is it's the bacteria that are doing all of the digesting so we're going to move materials along Okay, and inside of them, you actually have bacterial action, which is going to ferment carbohydrates. Think about poorly, you know, soaked beans. You're going to produce some B vitamins and vitamin K. And remember, inside class, I said, well, without these, because remember, B12 is inside this group as well, we don't have any functioning red blood cells. But it's just mucus. There are no enzymes being secreted, which means everything that the bacteria needs is there for it. Okay. So what does this actually look like? Here are the cells that are sitting on a lamina propria and they're absorbing water, absorptive cells, and the goblet cells are secreting mucus and materials are passing along the surface here. Which gets us to the last part of chapter 24. And that's how do we regulate all of this? And I realize, I've, um, how do I say this? I would love to be able to say that we've told you exactly what's responsible for the cephalic phase. But even when I was teaching this to you in class, all I was saying is specific neural centers have been activated inside your brain if you're thinking about eating, right? And that means we have to activate a cranial nerve. And that cranial nerve you guys want to be thinking about is going to be the vagus cranial nerve. And what's going to do is it's going to activate saliv you know salivation and in that salivation we will then prepare material so it travels into the stomach which makes sense right because that's where it's going to go but it's the distension of the tissue that now verifies that material has gotten into the stomach which will allow for gastrin secretion and increased in motel and uh, motility here and remember we need acetylcholine ach we need gastrin and we need histamine histamine for all of this to work properly for the gastric phase right so remember go find that figure inside your textbook understand um, that you actually have to distend the tissues for some of this to actually happen but the brain already knows food is coming and the brain knows food's coming because the parasympathetic nervous system has told it using the vagus nerve as materials exit, they're going to enter in the small intestine. That small intestine will now detect that. You have that pH shift that's going to allow for, let's go like this, BUI. Well, I don't, let's go like that first. Okay, let's go like that. All right, and here, I'm going to go like this. We are going to make sure that you understand that CCK secretin and GIP are being made right and i promised you i'd come back to these because what i want you to do i'm not going to tell you how they work <laughs> i'm not going to tell you how they work but they're now inside the circulatory system signaling back to the stomach saying oh, okay i've got enough stuff in here or into your brain saying okay we have food inside our small intestine okay likewise secretin increases the secretion of materials required for digestion to occur and i'm going to leave a big question mark next to this one right here okay 
what can you find out about it? Okay. I'm only doing this to make sure you go into a little bit of depth because I know it's on your final exam and you'd have to have looked really hard to have seen this to make sure you're prepared for it for the final exam. So to whoever the person was who put it on the final exam, you're just not a nice person. Okay. Um, it's going to slow the exit of materials from the stomach. So remember I said it's two tablespoons worth of material. The signaling that comes here begins to slow things down. So you increase the amount of time materials spend inside the small intestine. Okay. And ultimately that's where true chemical digestion, therefore absorption. And if I drew this cartoon one more time, okay. Uh, here's your gastrointestinal system, small intestine, large intestine, and you poop stuff out, right? Remember that really what we want to make sure you come out of this class understanding is that if all this material has been collected, it's going someplace and it's going to that liver where chapter 25 gets into the metabolism of everything you've just now absorbed via either the hepatic portal system or in green, the green here, your lymphatic system, which then returned it to your circulatory system, which then ultimately found its way to your liver. Okay. That's, that's the importance here because we have to get those monomers, the simple building blocks for our cells to anabolize, build new things, but also catabolize so we can get the energy from them. Okay. So thank you for your time. I hope this was helpful. And if you have specific email, need specific questions, email me and I'll try and put together an answer sheet while I'm doing the review stuff.